And now the, my next question would be, you know, coming out here and doing this, uh, I mean, as much negativity that we have and, and, and yeah. opposition, yeah. I mean, do you think it's doing any good? Is it do? I mean, John, is this even worth it? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Look, Jesus died. Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. He laid down his life for us, okay? And he gave us a very specific command. And that, that was something I heard, by the way, earlier. You're not out here making disciples. You're making people hate God. Listen, these people are people are dead in their trespasses and sin. They're already they're already condemned. Okay. Now, if 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 one person gets saved, I've had the privilege of being of being on um, in different locations. Just recently in New York City, where people came out and said, "I want to." Actually, some guy came out in the subway station and said, "I want to repent." Amen. How do I repent? Amen. And he was weeping. And he wanted to repent, and I, you know, we don't know if it's genuine or not. We don't right. know, right? right. Okay. Well, you got to honor but, that. But we honor that, and so we and so we pray with the guy. And, and but anyway, um, but if but if if we're doing nothing else, then it says in Isaiah six, where um, uh, hearing they do not understand, seeing they do not, you know, they, right. where Isaiah was actually sent to preach, right. to bring God's judgment upon the people. Now, if that's what our role is, is to expose and explain to people um, that. You know the truth of the gospel, the truth of God's word, the truth of God's law, um, and expose them to that, so that when they stand before uh, stand before God on Judgment Day and they say, "But I didn't have a chance." If that's the only reason that we're out here, then glory to God. That's what we're here. That's what we're here for. Right. Okay. But we pray, of course. We pray whenever we come out here. We say, God, would you please grant people repentance from sin and faith? That's the most thrilling thing okay. for a street preacher, or for any kind of preacher, for anybody that's preaching the gospel. That's the most thrilling thing that would ever happen. Right. But we are here to serve God and to give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that and when his word is proclaimed in the open air, that's what we're doing. Amen. Amen. As in his Bible says that his word never returns never, void. Ever. Never returns void. And 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 when you were speaking, something made me think of is that, listen, you're nothing and I'm nothing. We're just sowing seeds or watering seeds, Amen. and God does the increase. Amen. Now, we're going to get a reward, each one according to what he's done, Amen. but it's the, really it's it, the reward goes to Christ because he's doing it through me. Amen. We're just puppets. We're just vessels that Amen. he says, John, I want you to drive up to St. Paul and preach with, with Steve and these other guys. And so we say, okay, Lord, I'm an unprofitable servant just doing what you're commanding me to Amen. do. And we come out and preach, and we're like, God, you know, but sometimes in God's great mercy and love, even towards us, he, he shows us some fruit. Amen. Right, and that's what I was going to ask you if you've ever seen some fruit, but obviously yeah. you have seen oh, yeah. it, and that's and even if you never saw it, yeah. it wouldn't matter, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and the other blessing is this: is that you know you talk about your fellowship. Um, I, I'm no, I am no more blessed than when I'm together with other like-minded individuals that love the Lord Jesus Christ, that are willing to be bold and proclaim the good news. Uh, I mean, uh, brother, when we met at the um, uh, Pride Festival, it was instant fellowship. I mean, <laughs> we see a sign, we yeah. say, let's go hear what these guys are preaching. It's solid. Um, let's let's go let's Amen. go preach to, let's go preach together. I mean, the fellowship together, the, the the times together to come out and iron sharpening iron and, and just listening to the way one another does it uh, is is just such a a, uh, a lift up and it's what the church is really all about Amen. building up and equipping the saints to go out and do you know and so coming together you know coming together with a group of guys is a lot easier than just going out there and standing on a street corner all by yourself, all by yourself. I mean what an encouragement right. it is to come out here so it's a blessing to have you come down to uh, to st. Paul or to have you know any anything that we can do right. to just uplift God um, is, is is such a blessing personally to me so God rewards me in that way not not in the you know the mocks and the jeers of the crowd or anything like that but in having sweet fellowship and knowing that I'm bringing glory to Christ because his words being proclaimed in the street corner in the open air amen, amen. that's what I'm here for and Jesus did it in the open air amen. Paul did it in the open air yep. Peter did it in the open air Stephen but did wait it in a the second Noah preached for 120 years in the open air and he only had a total of seven converts that got on the ark with him, and it was his family. It was his family. It doesn't even mean that he was successful, but he was successful because it says he was a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher of righteousness. Noah found favor in but God's eyes. That's right, and that wasn't, and, you know, he died. God doesn't look at the numbers for success. He looks at faithfulness for success. Are you being faithful? Are you preaching the word? Yes, then you're being faithful. Then you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. So that's what Now, a couple more questions. Yeah. Do you think that this is... Uh, the only way, I mean, are, are you, are, this is only, everyone should be doing this. <laughs> I, everyone should be, um, 
you know, you're either um, a mission, um, every Christian should be a missionary or an imposter is what Charles Spurgeon said. Now, um, I am a fool for Christ. I get up on street corners and I preach in the open air, but it's not the only thing I do. Um, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not setting myself up and saying I'm more righteous than anybody else. And that's an accusation I've actually had. Sure. Listen, um, one to one, I, I, I share one I share to one. I, I've taken homeless guys out to lunch and sat down and ate lunch with them and shared with them across the table, uh, across the table from them. Um, so that's I, relational evangelism. Re relational. There you go. Um, I, I work, I, I, golf, I golf a lot as much as I can during the summer. Lord, you know, Lord's really blessed me. Um, and I build relationships on the golf course and I have conversations, you know. So faith, sports ministry. Sport, I, yeah, I, 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 I talk to people one to one, um, building relationships with them. But what I do instead of, you know, I don't believe in friendship evangelism where I fool somebody for two years and then all of a sudden say, I'm a Christian. Amen. No, I, I preach the gospel to them and, 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 and then if they, if they still want to be my friend, great. Right. And the you foundation know? is built on Christ, Amen. not golf. Amen. I, I think we all have different gifts. We all have different ways that we do it. But the most important thing is, is that God has told us to preach the gospel to every creature. And so that is a requirement. Preaching means opening your mouth and, and speaking. Evangelism means preaching or a pro proclamation of the evangel, good news. Amen. That's what it means. So, it, uh, you know, building a, a, a tile floor for somebody is not evangelism. Unless, while you're building the tile floor, you're opening your mouth and telling them about Jesus. Oh, yeah. that, then it becomes evangelism. Right. Okay? So, um, as long as the word of God, the gospel is being preached and proclaimed, then that's evangelism. If it's not being preached and proclaimed, then it's just a good work. Okay? Right. So, any way that you do it, just do it. Amen. I'm going to steal that from Nike. <laughs> just like you stole from me tonight. No, 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 no. <laughs> I did like your strapped and zapped, though. That was, that was, uh, that was right uh, off the top uh, man, of my head. That man. was good. That's good. Well, it's funny because I always say, you know, when Jesus went out, and people always say, why didn't you, why didn't you come out here and just pass out water? And I say, you know what, that's a great ministry, pass out water, but at the same time, you got to be preaching. Because Jesus didn't just give out bread. Right? Jesus didn't just heal and walk away. No. He was preaching the message Amen. to him. Amen. Right? Amen. And that's, that's where I think that a lot of these ministries out there have fallen short. They're doing a Amen. lot of humane, humanistic, humanism things, but they're not preaching, they're not preaching Christ and Bill being Gates. crucified. Bill Gates and Oprah can do those kind of good works. Right. You know, they've got millions and millions of dollars, and they do. And, and by God's common grace, they are showing God's common grace to other people by giving money. And I'm not, I'm not cutting them down at all for that. But it's not... Um, it's not the gospel, right. you know, no. it's not the gospel. Uh, it's not evangelism unless you are proclaiming the evangel. It's, right. You must be proclaiming. So. Hallelujah. Well, do you have uh, anything, anything before we go here uh, to say to the professing Christians, the unbeliever, or you pick one of them, Christians, unbelievers, professing Christians, what do, what do you got? Listen, um, I, I'll just share the testimony I just gave to Steve, uh, not Steve J, but uh, Steve over here, um, that I was a 1 John 1 9 Christian for a lot of years. And that meant that 1 John 1 9 Christian is this. Um, I, I, I had 1 John 1 9 memorized. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so I said, you know what? I can go on living any old way that I want to live. I can, I can do anything that I want to do. I can, uh, his grace is amazing. That means it covers me for all my sins, past, present, and future. So he knows what I'm going to do in the future so I can go ahead and do them. And all I have to do is um, ask God for forgiveness and then he's going to forgive me. But then I read that, uh, then I read that second, uh, second chapter, the first verse. My brothers, I write this to you, or my children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if you do sin, as though it should be something that's pretty irregular, it, it, but if you do sin, um, you have an advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And, and that really changed my life. The second thing I have to say is this, is that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life is a cute saying, but it's not the gospel. It's not the gospel. It's a, it's a, fake, it's a fake gospel, completely fake, okay? You must repent and put your trust alone in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, okay? And so if you're a Christian out there and you're thinking, well, because I was baptized, because I was raised in a church, you know, um, just like uh, Michael uh, said tonight, just because you live in a car doesn't, uh, live in a garage doesn't make you a car any more than going to church or being raised in a church makes you a Christian, okay? You must be born again, John 3, 3. That's what Jesus said. It's a work of, it's a work of God from start to finish. You must be born again. So Christian, non-Christian, atheist, you must be born again. God bless you.